Hi, Nicole Young here with a quick Photoshop tutorial on how to make an image look like it was photographed with a tilt shift lens to make it look like a miniaturized version of your scene. The best types of photos to use for this are photos taken from high above on your subject, like the image I have here. Okay, let's get started. Now, the very first thing I'm going to do is duplicate my background layer. I'm just going to click Command J and that gives me a duplicate layer. Next, I'm going to right click and convert it to Smart Object. I'll get into why I'm doing that in a minute. I'm going to go up to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and I'm just going to keep it at 50. I have it set here at 50. It's a really high number. I'm not going to leave it here. I actually want to drop it down. But the cool thing is I'm using Smart Filters so I can re-edit it after I've actually created the effect. So we'll keep it at 50 and click OK. All right, so now I'm going to add a mask and I actually, I tried doing it with this smart filter mask, but I had some weirdness going on. So I'm just going to add a mask to the actual layer. And then I'm going to go over and make sure I have the rectangle marquee selected. Go into my picture. I'm going to go ahead and create a long rectangle kind of just down here in the middle of the image. And I'm going to fill it with black. I have black as my background color over here. I'm going to hit Command Delete and Command D to deselect. The next thing I'm going to do is with that mask selected, I'm going to go over to my masks panel and just play with that feather until I see a good, I don't want to go too much, I kind of want it somewhere in the middle there. So that's maybe, let's see, I got about, about in the 60, 60 range. So we'll go with 60 pixels. So we're sort of seeing this effect kind of come to light now. But that Gaussian blur is a little too dramatic. So I'm going to double click over here in my smart filter and drop it down. And playing around with this, I found that around the 15 range was a pretty good number for this particular file size. So I'm going to click OK. Now, if I wanted to move this selection area, then I can do that. But I have to make sure that I unlink these. If I don't unlink them and I move that image around, then you can see we're actually moving the entire thing. I'm going to undo that. And if I click over here on this link icon, that allows me to move and edit and change that completely separate from the image that it's with. So as you can see, I'm moving it around. And I can even hit Command T and change the size of it. And if you look over on the right as I'm doing this, you'll see that black bar moving. That's just showing that that selected, that unselected area actually is moving. So I'm going to kind of go at a little bit of an angle here and then click return. So now I have the meat and potatoes of my actual tilt shift effect. But to finish this off, I'm going to add some contrast. So I'm going to click my curves layer and make an S curve just to add a little bit of contrast. I'm going to go back to my adjustments, go to my vibrance and increase that vibrance. And that's it. Let's go ahead and check the before and after. I'm going to hold my Option key down and click on the eyeball. we got a before and an after. 